Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you a slightly overdue painting tutorial. I finally found a gap in my schedule and was able to go back and get the Dark Reaper um, miniature painted up from the new Dark Eldar range and added to my Eldar playlist. I've had this on the, on the painting table to do for about four weeks now. So I'm delighted to finally get my hands on it, get it painted up for you guys. It was actually a much simpler miniature to paint than I was expecting. Um, I think I have a few sneaky tips and tricks for you guys to make it a particularly fast process so you can get uh, the squad of long-ranged menaces on the table quickly and effectively. So stick around, let me know what you think of the video, and enjoy. Okay, started this miniature off like I do with about 90% of my other videos, which is an all-over coat of Chaos Black, and then a Zenithal spray of a uh, Grey Seer. Um, just to add that light highlight to it. Next, we're gonna move over to the Contrast Black Templar, and we are going to apply this to all of the armor panels on this miniature, minus his face, his gun, and his hair plume. So uh, the face is the one you need to be particularly careful about, because we're gonna hit that with a bone contrast now in a minute, and we do not want it to be stained black first, because the bone contrast will not work over the top of that. So I already love how the black contrast has dried over the armor. I think it looks really, really good. And we're just going to accentuate that moving forward. So we're going to use the Skeleton Horde contrast now. There's only two real parts of the miniature that we are going to apply this to. That is his faceplate. And he's got a skull in his other hand. So we're, of course, going to use Skeleton Horde for that as well. So it's a really quick job. Honestly, when I begun the project of painting up the Dark Reaper for the video, I was expecting it to be super tedious. I always find black armor to be. I've done a couple of videos on other black armor methods uh, before, but I was quite pleased with how fast this one worked out, and I was quite happy with the final result as well. Next, we're going to move over to Volopus Pink, and this is a perfect color to start off those uh, kind of wine-colored guns that the Dark Reapers have. They also have matching plumes. Um, on their head and there's like a, a band around uh, his bicep on his left arm and there's a little tag hanging off the back of his fin I'm gonna say the fin coming out of his back I'm sure it has some sort of name but I, I don't know it so yeah follow up his pink those parts up this uh, scheme was actually so quick that I'm tempted to uh, construct the other four miniatures and get cracking on them I bet I could knock them out by the end of the day that would be another thing off my, my uh, pile of shame. So I got some Retribute Armor Gold now. Um, I'm sorry, I got this kind of a bad framing job here trying to get this painted. But just all the Eldar ruins, all the little gemstones, and all of the bits and pieces that are supposed to be gold on the miniature, including his big gnarly skull shoulder pad, was uh, given a coat of Retributor Armor Gold Spray. And that's pretty much all of the base coats on the miniature. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move over and... Uh, wash the model so i went for a null and oil and i'm going to apply this to absolutely every part of the model don't worry about the bone parts and the, the pink parts they look absolutely fantastic when they're layered up after the black it just adds that nice bit of dark shading to it but what it does do is it finishes off the armor in my opinion remember my channel is about getting miniatures painted quickly and efficiently trying to keep up with the release schedules of all these miniature companies is a mad thing to try and do, but I love how this black turns out. While that's drying, I'm going to get the miniature based and um, I'm gonna have a word with you guys. Okay guys, while we wait for that shade to dry, so once again, as usual, thank you guys for the continued support on the 365 project and for supporting me and the Mediocre Hobbies. And um, we're going from strength to strength with the channel and it is all thanks to you guys. So just keep doing what you're doing, like the videos, Make sure you drop comments and ask questions. I will get back to each and every one of you. If you are not subscribed, please do. About 65% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. So please hit that button. It will help me immensely. And if you find real value in what I do and it is helping you in your hobby, feel free to uh, contribute to the channel a little bit more. And there's links to my Patreon below where you can do that. So thanks a lot, guys. And let's get back to painting. Okay, like I said, I was going to get the miniature based um, while it was drying, and look how that dried. Like, I think that already looks stunning. Like, if you're really pressed for time, you could leave the miniature at that stage, and it wouldn't look bad on a tabletop whatsoever, especially in a whole squad of five of them. I think it would look fantastic. So I've got the uh, wraith bone in a pot here, and what I'm going to do is layer up the faceplate 
and the skull in his hand here. This is the one bit where you need to be super careful. Uh, even layering up the gun, you don't need to be as careful as the faceplate, mainly because with the black wash we put over it, it settled into the, the kind of the mouth grill and stuff really, really well. And we want to work the wraith bone around those details. And um, it's going to be one of the main focal points of the miniature. You do not want to uh, kind of make a mess of this. So the finest tip brush you have, uh, thin down your paint so it flows nicely off the end of your brush. And then just take your time. Okay, and with those bone parts done, it's time to move over to uh, layering up that gun. So for this, we're going to move straight on to Screamer Pink, the base color. One of my favorite colors, actually. And it's going to be straight from the pot. Water down a tiny bit if you want to. Um, and then layer up the uh, the gun, the casing of the gun. You leave all those black parts black and all the shadows there if you want to. But this worked as a really nice highlight color. So I highlighted the gun, the, the plume, obviously, and those two ribbony bits I talked about around his arm and around his fin. Got a, a quick highlight of the Screamer pink color as well. It's kind of a shame that no other Eldar units have this color casing for the gun because I actually really, really like it. I think it would look really cool on some different units. Maybe I'll add it into some different units myself moving forward, but uh, I can't think of ones I would do it for just yet. Kind of screams that kind of Yanaid color armor, which I really like as well. After that, we're going to go over to Lead Belcher, and I'm going to use this to highlight up all of those gold parts. So just where light would hit those bits the most. So just kind of top corners, um, a few dot highlights. You don't have to go crazy here. It just adds this tiny touch of color, super fast technique, and uh, it works a treat. While I'm doing this, I also paint over all of the actual gems with the silver as well. Because I'm going to contrast over them now in a second, and that really adds a, a bit of vibrancy to the to the contrast if there's a nice bright silver underneath. Even going around the skull is the best example. As you can see, I just hit the kind of forehead area, across the bridge of the nose, the eye sockets, a little bit on the cheek, and then across the top. The majority of the shoulder pad is still gold, but just the touch of silver really adds that kind of three-dimensional look to it. And then we're straight in with our Talazar blue. I also used the lead belcher in the previous one to paint in his eye sockets, just because I'm also going to add the same contrast to the eye sockets to give him that kind of glowing eye lens look. And uh, doing the silver over it is super quick and efficient. Most people do like kind of white and stuff like that, but if I'm, if I'm already working with the silver, I will just throw the silver in there. There's a couple of gemstones done, and as you can see, I'm just going to throw it straight into the eye socket. And there we have it. With that, that, in my opinion, is a finished Dark Reaper miniature. I am more than happy to add that to my collection in a full squad of five and deploy it on a tabletop. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ask me any questions you have in the comments below, and I will get back to each and every one of you. Big shout out to all my Patreons. Thank you so much for the continued support, and I will see you guys in the next video.